Hello everyone, my name is Andy Fanson and I'm a cartoonist with The Dandy. The Dandy. And I'm uh, currently drawing a couple of strips, uh, one of which is Bad Grandad. And I'm here today to show you how to draw Bad Grandad. So as you can see, I've already started off with the uh, pencil lines. Got that all out of the way. <coughs> He's basically made up of a few shapes. His head's like a rectangle. Uh, his body's a curved kind of rectangle. And with arms and legs, as little sticks coming out and then I go over it again and fill in all the detail, the nose, the eyes, the clothes and whatnot. And once that's ready, I go over it in pen. So let's do that, shall we? Yes. Okay, so I always start with the nose. You'll notice bad granddad's got a big old nose, like George from George vs Dragon. I just find big noses funny, I guess. I've got a bit of a big nose myself, so you know, I can laugh at them. So yeah, he wears a big, thick, almost like, you know, NHS glasses for his diminishing eyesight. Big, thick frames. Like so. Ooh. There we go, he put his eyes in there. His ear comes up around here, sort of level with the eye in the no top of the nose that in there and then the arm of the glasses can go behind the ear like so. His eyebrows are set in a slightly downward turned direction because he's no doubt thinking up some mischief. His hair is a big sweeping quiff almost like ice cream has been dropped on his head. Just a big Mr. Whippy style ice cream hairdo. I think it's important to have a standout hairdo for characters that make them, you know, something to make them really stand out from other characters that are in the strip. So I always try and think, think of that when designing characters, think of something eye catching. Uh, he's got a little bit of a double chin there. Probably from too many years of eating sweets and cakes and crisps put on a little bit of weight around his face. <laughs> his arm comes down here like that with a little sleeve poking through. His fist is all clenched here. He's ready for trouble. And then the clothes. Where's a little blazer here. There's the lapels. And the other side just peeks out here so you can see the lapels here. Comes around like that. And he's got a little waistcoat underneath. These clothes are kind of inspired by clothes that my own granddad wore when I was, that I remember him wearing when I was growing up. Clothes, uh, you used to wear a blue blazer and trousers and a little waistcoat with a tie, very smartly dressed. And I always remember that, so when it came to designing this character I thought I'd dress him up in similar clothes. It's a little tribute to my granddad. My granddad was very pleased to see, see that in the strip, I think. He'd, He's read it and he enjoyed it, so that's good. Um, his little stick comes down there. It's a walking stick, which makes him look a bit old and frail, but obviously he's anything but. Always getting into trouble and running about the place and causing havoc. Big shoes. Again, another feature of my sort of style is I like big noses and big feet. I don't know why, I don't know where that's come from, but there you go. So there you are, he's all inked up, as you can see. And now I just go around with a slightly thicker pen, just to pick out the uh, outline so um, he stands out from the backgrounds and stuff. So if you've got a busy scene or something, he'll stand out with a nice thick outline. Go around the hair. I always remember Matt Groening from who the guy who created The Simpsons uh, speaking in a, in a sh TV program I watched a few years ago where he was saying you know you've made a good character design when you can recognize, still recognize the character when they're in shadow or silhouette so if this was all black you'd still be able to recognize the character and that's something I've, that's stayed with me since I've seen that and so I always try to think of that when designing a character and it's true because if you think of things like Bart Simpson if you just had his head and 
it was completely black. You'd still recognise it as Bart Simpson because it's got those distinctive spikes at the top. And Mickey Mouse, if you just put that in silhouettes, you'd recognise it from the two large circular ears. So it's something I always try to think of when I'm designing characters, and that's why Grandad's got a big quiff hairdo and a big nose. So theoretically, if you put it in silhouettes and showed it to a dandy reader and said, who's that? They should be able to pick it out as their bad granddad. So yeah, we just go around the lines here, thickening it up, making him look a bit more solid around his legs, around his hand. Oh, just a little bit white there, bad me. And then we come back up full circle and meet up where we started. That's that bit done. And then just for this video, I'll do a little bit of colouring in of the black bits with a thick pen. I go up from like a very thin pen for the first first inking, the initial inking. I use a quite a thin pen with quite a thin nib so I can get all the detail in. And then when I do the outline, it's a slightly thicker pen again. And then for any big blocks of black, a marker pen to make sure that they're all nice and bold. So just colour in his foot. Very smart black shoes. Colour him in there. And there. There we go. Like that. And there you go, that's the finished inked product. Bad Grandad in all his glory. And obviously from here I would then scan this into, uh, into my computer as a black and white image. And I'd open it up in my image editor of choice, colour it up and uh, shade it and whatnot, all in, all in the computer. And then that leaves us with the finished image in the comic itself. There he is, from the latest issue. Out now. Why not buy it? <laughs> okay, so that's Bad Grandad. Thank you all for listening. And uh, why not give it a go yourself? Send them in. We'd love to see them. I'm going now then. Bye! Bye now.